Hey guys, I'm Todd, and today we'll be setting up a Cube World server on Windows Azure. Um, this will give you one free month of server hosting. After that, you're looking at about sixty to seventy dollars a month to host um, this kind of server on Windows Azure, which isn't cheap. So this isn't an economical long-term solution um, for most people, um, but more something you'd maybe play around with for a little bit. Um, it could become economical if you delete your machine. Um, and remake it every time you need to play on it, um, but I'll get I'll get more to that later. Um, it's also maybe not the most secure method or just the most efficient method to do this, but it is quick and easy, and it will give you one month of free Cube World server hosting. So let's get into it. So first step is we're gonna set up the Windows Azure account. That's pretty simple. We'll then configure our Windows Server 2012, get the virtual machine deployed, and do all the general simple setup stuff. Um, but I'm going to need to install KubeWorld, which is similar to on your desktop version, and run server.exe. From there, we then need to configure our endpoints so people can connect to our server. So let's go. So here's the URL to register for Windows Azure trial. And next, then we once you've registered, we now have to create the Windows Server 2012 um, data center virtual machine. So these are the steps we'll be following, and I've got some screenshots to show you how to do it. So first, we want to click once you've registered your account and you're on manage.windowsazure.com. Um, you want to click on new, and then this thing will slide up, and you want to click compute if it's not already clicked for you by default then virtual machine and then from gallery from here this should be selected by default but if not make sure you have Windows Server 2012 data center selected then click next so give it a machine name that doesn't really matter what you give it anything you like and don't forget what details you give the username and password leave the size to small and release date so leave these two to the de defaults um, and give yourself a username and passwords make sure you don't forget those then click next so here you want to give it a DNS name something unique something you remember like maybe I'd put Todd server um, and that's what people will use to connect to your server this address um, then from there you want to select uh, region closest to you, this will reduce your ping or latency, lag, whatever you want to call it. Um, so select whatever's closest to you. I'm from Australia, so I selected Southeast Asia because that was the closest for me, but um, whatever works for your specific location. Then click Next. So this page, you can leave everything set to the defaults, um, and then you want to click the little tick down the bottom right. And this will start to deploy your server. So you want to wait about 10 to 20 minutes. So you know, go grab a coffee or whatever you do and come back after that amount of time. OK, so we'll now be setting up the Windows Server 2012. Um, we have to First, we have to connect to it before we, we can set anything up. So I'll show you how to do that. Then we'll need to disable um, IE Enhanced Security. This is basically so we can download the game and install it. Um, as we would have um, in our Windows desktop. So once we've got the game downloaded, we need to install it as we would in our Windows desktop. Um, allow your server.exe file in your firewall, which that will download after you've installed it and logged in. Then we want to run our server.exe and the server will be running at that point, but you can't connect to it yet. And if you want, you can modify server.cfg. Um, so with this, you can change, there's a code in there. So first you have to clo close server.exe. Um, you can modify that code, which will basically change how the map is. It's the map code, or there's a proper term for it that I'm forgetting, but that can change that. You can also change um, other settings. I haven't looked into it too much, but apparently you can increase the user count. By default, you'll only be able to run about four users in this server, but apparently it can be increased to, I believe, 20 or 24. Um, I'll do another video on that once I've had a 
chance to experiment with that myself. Um, but for the time being, you're fine not to touch that, um, but feel free to play with it too if you want to. That said, that file won't appear until the first time you've ran server.exe, um, in case you're wondering where it is. Alright, so how we connect to our server. So um, we go to our all items thing and make sure we have our virtual machine selected, then click connect. Um, that'll prompt us to download a .rdp file, which I believe can only be run in Windows. So if you're on Mac, you're out of luck. And, but in that case, then you probably can't play the game anyway, so you're probably not on the Mac. Um, so we want to save that somewhere safe because we'll need that file in the future to connect to our server. Should we have to check on anything, which hopefully we won't. Hopefully we'll just run it for the month and then it'll disappear when the trial <laughs> finishes. So run that file, then it'll prompt you for some stuff like login details and security certificates. You basically just want to say yes to everything there um, and until you're into your server and then it'll ask you to log into your server and all these logins, you'll be giving it the login information um, that you gave earlier that I told you not to forget. And so once you're there, well then, we then should see the dashboard screen. So this isn't the first screen you'll see, but this window should have popped up. If it's not, just wait a little while, it'll pop up. If it never pops up, um, it's the first icon in the bottom left. Um, but it should be popped up, and when it is popped up, you click local server, and this is your local server settings. Um, and we want to go to IE Enhanced Security Configuration and click there. It should say on for you. Um, I'd already changed this at this point in time. Um, you want to click that and it'll bring up this window. So you want to make sure these two are off and then click OK. Once you've done that, you can open in Explorer and browse the web like normal. If you don't do this, it'll have a hissy fit every time you try to go to a web page and it's, it's not fun trying to browse the web without doing this on a server. You shouldn't do this on the server, but um, we're not too concerned about security. So browse the web to um, the website where you purchased KubeWorld. Um, download the installer for that. Install the game as you normally would in the desktop. Um, run your KubeWorld application. Uh, log in. You should only have to log in once, but you might have to do it again to download updates. Um, this did take me a while um, <coughs> to download because the servers, I believe, were getting pretty hammered at the time, but it shouldn't hopefully take as long for anyone from here onwards. Um, if you do have issues, just remember that this game is, um, is pretty popular at the moment and their servers aren't quite keeping up with the demand. Um, so it might not actually be your fault. Um, and then once the download's completed, you can close the window and I just recommend not trying to attempt to play the game. I didn't try it myself, but I just, you're on a server and it's a remote connection and it's not going to be playable. <laughs> no matter how hard you try, it can only cause bad things. So once we've done that, we can go back to, other, back to this window. If you closed it, it's the bottom left icon on your screen. Um, and then we want to click on the Windows Firewall um, it's public on thing and that'll bring up this and we want to click on allow an app or feature through Windows Firewall so I allowed both of these because I was having trouble downloading the patch and I think it was their server in so I don't think I actually needed to add that but if you do have some issues you might need to add the kubelauncher.exe for the most part, you probably should only have to add server.exe. So for, to do that, you click allow, sorry about that, allow another app, um, and a window will pop up and click. you want to click browse to the location, so it should be installed wherever you install it, so probably C drive, um, C program files, kubeworld, server.exe, so you want to browse to that, click OK, and just, you know, leave everything as defaults. Um, and then, so then you want to click once that's all added and ticked the box, like looks like that. Um, you want to go OK. So from there, we can now navigate to our directory where we've installed KubeWorld, and we will find server.exe. 
or because I haven't changed Windows Server yet to show the extensions, it might just look like Server. Um, so you want to run that file and you should get a window that does this. Um, it'll just say waiting for connection every five seconds. Um, if someone joins, it'll say play a zero or play a one joined. Um, if someone disconnects, it'll tell you that. And there's maybe more things it can tell you. Um, but all in all, not much happens here. So once that's running, the server's running, everything's good. Um, that should also create the server.cfg too once you've done that. But you want to make sure you close this before you edit this. So now we're going to want to go back to this screen and we'll want to click on here or we might have to double click or click on the arrow, I'm not quite sure, but basically click around here on your server and it'll bring you to this screen. So up the top we have endpoints, so click there and then it'll bring you to this screen. Um, as you can see I've already added at this point uh, my endpoints, so you can kind of ignore that if you want to. But click add and that'll bring up this window leave this as defaults and then click next um, the name doesn't really matter what you put there um, but that just helps you remember why you put it there so cube world's probably a good idea to put in um, protocol tcp um, and just put one two three four five for both ports um, it's probably the um, you, you can probably play with ports and stuff if you want to make things more secure, but for the most part, it shouldn't be an issue for anyone hosting this kind of server. Um, and I have got the red marks because I already set this up earlier, so you shouldn't get the red marks, and then you can click tick to go next, and that will add your endpoints. From there, your server's up and running, and you've actually finished, so now you just want to get on your server. Um, we should all be able to work that out, but just in case you get a little confused, you want to start up the game and you want to get to this screen, so that's after you've selected your character and stuff, um, and click connect to server, which will bring up this screen. Um, excuse all my scribbly mess. Uh, and you want to enter that DNS you entered earlier, so um, maybe it's, um, you know, example.cloudapp.net or toddserver.cloudapp.net or something along those lines. Um, so enter your DNS, um, and then you simply click connect, and then you have fun, and really enjoy your server, and then, then, then you're really happy, so you like, subscribe, and comment to this channel, um, well, if you feel like it. Um, if you have any issues, uh, feel free to comment, and I'll help you out. Um, I know this video was... Um, was fairly brief. I, I, I try to keep it fairly short because I assume that most people will be able to work through the parts that I didn't go through in detail. Um, but if that does happen to be an issue, then you know, let me know if there's something I didn't cover well enough that you weren't sure about. I see a lot of tutorial videos though that go into a lot of um, a lot of detail about things that I personally it's just really following prompts and common sense computer stuff. Um, so I made this video to sort of hopefully be a little more streamlined than most. Um, so thanks for watching and let me know what you think.